So what is wireless? Uh, as the name implies that if we are not going to use any kind of cabling to connect our devices, uh, we need some kind of infrastructure for that. For, so for that we need these access points. So these things are known as the access points or wireless access points. So basically the concept and the idea is same. If we have these two computers, do two PCs and they want to communicate or share the information between each other. We remember from our previous uh, knowledge that we used to run some cable from uh, computer all the way to the switch and then from switch to the another PC and all information pass on using these uh, these cables so whatever the information they will go across these cables but this time we do not need these cables so what is the solution for that the solution is that we are going to install one access point that will be connected with the switch okay and then switch may be then connected with the router and then router will be connected with the our service provider so we have internet connectivity but this time we are going to access this access point with the help of wireless so in case if this computer wants to communicate with this computer whatever um, the, the, the information he wants to send it will go through the wireless access point and to this computer so the medium we are gonna use is air okay so sometime you come up uh, with uh, uh, some uh, uh, vocabularies those are like hotspot somebody is saying kindly connect with my hotspot what does it mean it means uh, this is the same thing like access point but this term basically used when we are going to use these kind of you know access points in a public uh, environment like in uh, we have the airports or maybe we are sitting in a hotel environment or maybe we are sitting in a cafe so they give us this facility uh, could be free or maybe you need to pay so for that they use these terms hotspot so you're gonna connect uh, your laptop with these hotspots to access to access the internet connection then we have some another terms being used in wireless technology uh, those are ad hoc BSS and ESS let's discuss about it one by one so what is ad hoc services uh, in some cases we do not have access point let's suppose we do not have access point but this computer wants to share information with this computer so what is the solution the solution is every computer has kind of some infrared technologies like Bluetooth okay they will enable it and even the Wi-Fi as itself as well with the help of Wi-Fi as well and this uh, computer also having like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi technology enabled and they can uh, make this uh, enable and then with the help of uh, sharing this information with each other with some passphrase uh, they can share the resources so basically there is no access point in between to share the information so the information that is shared without access point is known as ad hoc and sometimes it is also known as IBSS which stand for independent basic service set so it means without basic service set so opposed to independent basic service set we have basic service set and what basic service set is we are having access point between these devices so if they want to share the resources if this STA which is stand for station device 
want to send information to this device it will go through the access point okay so this is known as basic service set Then we have ESS, which stands for Extended Service Set. It is nothing if we are using more than one access point in our net infrastructure. This is known as ESS. As you can see here, we have client laptop here, another client laptop here. If this wants to communicate with this laptop, it has to go through this one access point. It will touch the router and then router will pass information to this another access point and this is how information will be uh, sent back and forth so another term that is used in wireless infrastructure is called seamless or seamless roaming or just the roaming and what does that mean So basically, uh, in a seamless roaming, what happens? You have this one STA device or the laptop, okay? And you're sitting in one channel. This is known as channel one, okay? And this STA device is connected with the access point with the SSID, which name is Huawei, okay? Let's say this is the name. Or you can say the name is just JSS. This is the name of our um, access point which we are connected with. Okay, so you have, uh, you know, come across with this situation as well. You are sitting in one room and then you roam around, you go somewhere far from that access point, but still you are connected with the same SSID. This is thing known as seamless roaming. So the idea behind that is, for example, this is room one and this is room two. That is very far from room one. But this is your laptop. You are connected with this access point. But as you go across and sit in this room two, automatically you will be connected with the, this access point. Okay but you will not aware and because there no service disruption uh, there is there will be no any kind of disconnection okay and you will be seamlessly connected with this another access point with the same ssid later on i will show you um, why we need this channel one here and channel six here but these things you need to take into account so ESS, uh, if uh, I give you the definition, if you are using wireless network while traveling, you were on an ESS. Okay, so these are extended service set. And we know from our previous knowledge, ESS is used when we are using multiple access points. Okay, such network use multiple access point to create an overlapping areas of coverage. As you can see this area, is overlapping and it should be like 10 to 15 percent overlapping involved this is where your you know the migration process is happening from one access point to another access point and that this cell this area this circle is basically known as the cells so these are the terms you know these are vocabularies you need to understand for your production as well as for your exam point of view. Then SSID service set identifies is nothing just the name of your access point. And you might be familiar with this thing because uh, uh, if you are using internet at your home, of course, on the Wi-Fi setting, you will uh, see multiple names of your uh, of the internet connections. Like one you are using, maybe is written with a home, home, net, and this belongs to you. So that thing is known as the SSID, service set identifiers. A Wi-Fi network SSID is a technical term for its network name. For example, if 
you see a sign telling you to join a network with an SSID of airport Wi-Fi you just need to pull up the list of the wireless network nearby and join the airport Wi-Fi that's it okay so designing a wireless coverage this is also one of uh, very important slide uh, I do remember in my old days when I was configuring uh, wireless coverage for my hotel environment and we have like eight uh, floors okay so what I used to do um, this is the floor let's say and these are the rooms So I had to configure, configure or install those uh, access points on the ceiling in such a fashion that for example if I install that access point here at least this access point should have a coverage to this room and this room. Then I need to install that uh, access point another one here somewhere here. So it will cover not only overlap but it will cover the this uh, room as well so this is how you know because at that time we had no these kind of things like this ikahau it's a site survey tool and it, this is uh, like a very good tool uh, if you want to learn more about it you can just google it or go to the youtube and they will show you the method how you can perform site survey so what site survey is uh, basically you know mm, uh, you will carry a laptop okay with a how uh, uh, gadgets on top of that um, uh, laptop you will be carry and then you will just walk in the room then you will come out then you will walk in the floor then you will go inside the room then this is how you will go one by one okay all the way back you will from where you started so this is how you know this your software will automatically will guide you where you gonna install ex your access point maybe they will look at this area this area somewhere this this area somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here so it will not only uh, give you a good guess where you're gonna install these access access point but how many access point you're gonna install so it is up to you as well if you want to give uh, a good coverage to these all rooms you should have like you know in this case as you can see one two three four five six seven eight somewhere okay eight access points but it could be more than eight as well because you want to cover these all rooms uh, with the coverage okay so the first thing that comes under uh, wireless deployment is the conduct site survey so this is the tool that will be used if I will very quickly take you to this website and I can show you as you can see I have already opened this one so uh, this is the name of the website ikahau.com and as you can see this guy is just uh, you know um, checking uh, about the frequencies first of all what kind of frequencies it can use once it has figured out then you know it will carry this laptop and then these uh, are the things that is uh, it, he is having like these are the gadgets okay and then um, as you can see you know uh, as you can clearly see um, he's suffering here because there are so many things he's carrying so Ikahau came up with an idea so he will carry only this laptop so instead of carrying these multiple Wi-Fi devices okay as you can see these are Wi-Fi devices they came up with the idea with this gadget 
they will uh, he will just like uh, you know back carry this one and this uh, this device will be connected with the this uh, laptop and now this guy will be uh, walk in the floor or the area he want to do a site survey and then he can you know go one by one and uh, the process will you know guide you through how to uh, do the site survey basically so this is a very good tool uh, you can further dig deep if you want to if you are interested you can learn about uh, ikahao technology and i have been using this as well for my projects then another important thing is minimizing ssid and what does it mean it means you know um let's suppose uh, uh if we have we have this office okay and we want or we have a plan to install multiple access points in our uh, office or in organization so what you gonna do you will not do like this for example you have one access point here and you will name this access point list like AP AP1 then you will figure out that another access point you need to install here with the name A2 another access point with the name A3 another access point here with the name A4 and so on and on okay this is not a good uh, you know uh, by the way mechanism to use uh, deploy these access points in your organization why every time you roam around you need to provide a new credential for this access point because this is not a seamless roaming by the way so it is saying minimize SSIDs minimizing SSID means you have to give them name all same like a1 here a1 here a1 here and with the same password so when the guy will roam around it will be a seamless roaming this access point will take over uh, without noticing anything or without having this guy noticed okay so this is called minim minimize SSID so in some organization you also used the, for the guest as well so what you can do in the same access point in the same access point you can create one SSID with name like JSS and with the same access point you can create uh, another SSID for the guest with the name JSS underscore guest okay so you could have only two uh, SSIDs you cannot go beyond that otherwise you know uh, your, the logic will fall apart another important aspect is the channel design that is also a very important concept so as you can see here uh, if you have very good visuals you can see there is the boundary behind these circles so basically these are the floor plans and somebody did like you know access point here this is the access point this is another access point this is another one and so on we have like eight access points here okay but they haven't put these access point on the same channel as you can see this access point is on channel 11 this one is channel 1 this one is channel 6 and then again it start from cha channel 11 6 and 1 then 11 and 6 why because uh, because if you will keep uh, this channel with channel 11 means this channel is in channel 11 and this one the access point is also in channel channel 11 um, you know there will be a issues there will be a like uh, 
they will be working on a same frequency and you know the, when both frequencies are same you could have so many issues okay uh, you could have collisions uh, you could have uh, uh, service degradation so always keep it in mind to keep these channels on a separate domain or on separate uh, the number okay like channel 11 1 and 6 11 6 1 this is how uh, you are gaining also another thing that is called overlapping as you can see it is overlapping okay if you will use the same channel uh, the chances are they will not overlap and you will not get any kind of seamless roaming and it is mentioned here 15 to 20 percent overlap is also required because when you move your laptop from one channel to another channel uh, this another channel should you know take this uh, automatically uh, he, he, he will get this uh, uh, if this guy is roaming for example it, he, he will he is somewhere here okay now he as he's moving somewhere here this channel will take over so this is known as seamless roaming so as you can see here when we are working with a 2.4 gigahertz cellular coverage this is how the channel should be configured but when you are on 5 giga cellular coverage this is how channel should be configured but these are things a little bit advanced but you should have the idea how to configure the channels and we will do a lab for those as well now this thing will will be very familiar to you if we have uh, you know studied uh, the switching and we have already done and we remember that there if we are using half duplex okay and we know half duplex we have collisions so many collisions to avoid those collisions or to detect those collisions we use the same kind of technology but with the d csma slash cd carrier sends multiple access with collision detection but in case of air or in case of wireless we use csma slash ca the concept is 100 percent symmetrical but only the difference is with the a instead of detection it will do just the avoidance okay so um as it is mentioned the concept of collision dom domain applies also in a wireless network because the radio signals tra traverse a shared medium because they are sharing a, a this air medium which is shared medium uh, which is the wi-fi radio spectrum sender send rts which is request to send means this sender will send first of all rts okay to check uh, whether the uh, the path is clear now okay frame and responder will send the cts so the responder will send the cts it will tell to this uh, uh, requester that you know the path is clear and you uh, are allowed to send the information so after that final acknowledgement will be sent from the receiver so once it will receive the data it will send the acknowledgement back to the sender so that's why then another system if he if this system wants to send now the acknowledgement has been already sent it means the path is clear now this pc3 is ready to send the information or the request so the concept is almost symmetrical that we have discussed in a csms slash cd
So these are things are same like carrier sense multiple access with the collision avoidance. Uh, everybody will sense the carrier and then everybody has same access uh, to send the information and if there is any kind of collision they need to avoid those collisions. And then we have some wireless standards and if we been using uh, wireless uh, router access points or home routers uh, we are very familiar that these things comes up there as well like 802.11 a b g n standards and these are like somehow old standards okay so this is like you know these are known as 802.11 standards it is defined by ieee so the years they released in back in one uh, in 1999 okay so this is very old and 802.11b also came in the same release but the the difference was it works on 5 gigahertz and 802.11b works at 2.4 gigahertz with 11 mbps of speed and 5 gigahertz with a 54 mbps of speed then they came up with 802.11g that is also very similar to this one so it is it means 11g is back up back compatible with 11b okay so um, they work on the same frequency which is 2.4 gigahertz uh, but the only difference is uh, this b is uh, have maximum data rate is at 11 mbps while the 11 g has 54 mbps means better speed then we have 802.11 n that is uh, compatible with these both okay because it works at 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz but the most beneficial part is 600 Mbps means much more better speed as compared to this this one then the time moved on and then uh, you know the engineers they came up with uh, another uh, standard which is 11 AC uh, with the 1.3 gigabits per second and 10 to 12 gigabits per second which is in year 2019 so this is a latest one so you have to uh, remember these standards and uh, the frequencies and the maximum data rate because these are uh, you know very common interview questions by the way of course uh, when we are uh, using wireless uh, access points we need to have kind of privacy okay um, when we are going to connect with our access point uh, it, it is it isn't like that uh, you know uh, if I have a home router and I'm trying to connect with it okay this is my router okay and I can connect and if it is not protected the chances are there are so many other uh, people around you um, for example your neighbors or someone is sitting uh, outside your home they can also connect with your access point and they are using your bandwidth okay so for that we need a privacy we need a security for that wireless LAN they came up with the standards these privacy standards uh, the first one is web okay and this is wired equivalent privacy this is very basic encryption basically it use uh, size of 40 bit encryption okay because that was the first standard came into being so that's why you know it was very small and it has no any strong authentication uh, is keys are breakable keys it is not a scalable solution 
the remedy was used to do MAC filters and SSI cloaking, you know, to mitigate uh, the problem that it had. But again, uh, it was old technology and, uh, you know, it is being hacked. So basically, you know, what happened in web? Uh, if uh, we have this access point here, let's say this is access point, and we have this laptop which is configured with a web authentication. When it wants to uh, authenticate with this access, uh, access point, this access point basically send the packet which contains the password. Okay. Which contains the password. If the hacker is sitting here and he, if he or she is tapping this information, he can clearly see this password. Okay. And another drawback was that Let's say this uh, uh, wireless, uh, div uh, this laptop previously connected with the, this access point, but somehow, you know, it is disconnected again, this service. Now it wants to connect again or authenticate again. Again, you know, uh, the password should be remembered, but you know, access point will send the password again back to this uh, laptop. So this is how, you know, the hackers, they are very clever. They, uh, they will, what they will do, they will disconnect this connection between these two devices. Why? So this uh, laptop will go for another attempt for the authentication and meanwhile, this hacker will interrupt in between and will get this packet information. And this packet information we know is having this password information and this is how they're gonna crack and can use the same information to access this access point so that is the reason you know the web web has already been obsolete and if uh, you go in so inside your uh, access point the newest access point you will see web is no more there because this is very weak encryption So I will skip this one for the timing and I will jump to the WPA which is known as Wi-Fi protected access. This is a, a bit, you know, um, you can say the new concept they came up with. Uh, this is a standardized protocol. It has improved encryption, strong authentication. Uh, it used like leap, peep and there is another thing that call it TKIP which is temporal key integration protocol okay and TKIP basically uh, use uh, as we know this is web use 40 bit but in TKIP uh, they made it more advanced and they used it like 64 all the way to 128 bit of encryption okay so the encryption or the block cipher or the block size has been improved as compared to WEP but it it is also a long gone you know because uh, it it also came up with some flaws some issues some errors so uh, you know uh, that's why they had to remove this option as well so they came up with a, another idea with the same like uh, this the uh, with the same WPA they came up with a WPA2 it has instead of TKIP they use AES which stand for advanced encryption standard which uh, uh, by the way use 128 192 and 256 bit of size for the encryption 
it has a better better authentication and dynamic key management that was static by the way as you can see the static so it is dynamic key management it is sending keys dynamically so even if the attacker or the hacker is sitting in in between he will not guess these password by the way so this is a very strong authentication and that is being used in these days let's move further another concept under wireless is known as wireless lan controller and what is wireless lan controller is used in combination with the lightweight access point which is known as lwap protocol to manage the lightweight access point in a large quantities by the network administrator or network operation operation center the wireless lan controller is a part of data plane with a cisco wireless model so before i go to the wlc what is it i just give you another example so cisco has two kind of archi architecture under wlc one is distributed architecture another one is centralized architecture so what happens in distributed wifi architecture as you can see from the diagram we have how many access points only one and two do you think we need some kind of another single pane of glass or wireless lan controllers to manage these two devices no because there is even no uh, uh, admin overhead if i am working if i am working as administrator i just go into this access point console or gui i will configure this access point i will go to this access point i will configure this access point and that's it even if i have like 5 to 6 access points i will do i will go one by one uh, i will configure all the configuration like ssid the password channels okay and the frequencies and then i will go here and because five or six uh, uh, access points are not a big deal but what in case you have like thousand of access points like in my case uh we have uh, like 12 floors in my uh, hotel environment and every um, floor equipped with almost 10 access points so you can multiply 10 with the 12 and you can come up with like 120 access points which is also a very big deal 120 access points if uh, the manager will ask me to go to configure 120 access points what i will do i think it will take like 4 to 5 days to configuring these access points one by one so what is the solution and what is the remedy for that so the solution is wireless lan controller i will configure let's say we have 1000 access points i will configure on top of that one wireless controller and i will just do configuration on this device that's it like ssid frequency channels the passwords encryption everything will be replicate to these access points and what that infrastructure is known as that is known as centralized architecture which is on the next slide so this is our centralized architecture so we have wireless lan controllers and then we have lightweight access points uh, which basically uh, going to grab these configuration from wireless lan controllers and then maybe system admin is sitting here okay somewhere here and he is just concerned with wireless lan controllers 
whatever the configuration will be done on this WLC will be replicated on these other uh, lightweight access points. Another very important uh, concept or the term that is being used in a uh, uh, wireless LAN controller is called cap wrap. As you can see, these cap wrap just like you know VPN tunnels. A kind of you know it is not like VPN, but a kind of concept you can take you know. So basically, whatever the information. I configured as a system admin to this wireless LAN controller. It is gonna go through what ways? Okay, so basically, wireless LAN controller and lightweight access points, the language of love or the language of communication is using the cap fab. So, this is how they're gonna know each other about. The information so whatever the information wireless LAN controller is gonna pass to access point is gonna go through cap wrap okay which stand for control and provisioning of wireless X point so if uh, you are interested in to uh, read about this thing is a protocol which makes it possible to bind a lightweight access point with a wireless LAN controller. The cap web protocols encapsulate the traffic between the lightweight access point and WLC, a virtual tunnel called cap well. As you can see, this is a virtual tunnel is created. All traffic from access point to the WLC travel through this tunnel. So whatever the information that is coming, it will tra travel through this cap web and will go to all the way to the WLC. Okay. So all traffic from the access points terminate to the WLC controller and then diverted from the controller to the wired network. Then we have another wired network like this is wired. It will go here and then we have like internet here or some X, um, uh, router here which is connected with the, our ISP. Okay. Which is nothing but the cloud. Okay, so whatever the information it will come from here, it will go to the WLC and then we will use these cap webs to send this information to the requester. How WLC controllers look like? and they have some ports just like you know in the switches or the routers WLC is totally a unique device which is having a totally different ports. some of the ports like common but some ports are a, a little bit different so controller ports are the physical ports of the device as shown in the picture the following are the most important parts ports basically so I have mentioned here uh, the first thing is service port you can correlate it with the this one this thing is the service port and what is it used for initial boot function we familiar that uh, in the routers we have boot function capabilities so this is used for the boot function system recovery out of band management if you want to configure the controller GUI okay uh, we just can you know uh, use RJ45 Ethernet cable uh, we can connect with the computer okay and this device have some kind of IP uh, through which you know we can access the GUI of this uh, device so this is the service port is used for then we have this uh, RP port if it is mentioned here yes this is a redundancy port you, you can correlate with this one this port is used to connect another control for redundant operation and you know redundancy is uh, beneficial uh, for any organization what if this device goes down what will happen we must have another same device ready 
okay which have one rp port which will be connected with this rp port so this is the concept just like uplink port so not only the heartbeat of uh, this because uh, if this will down how this uh, thing will know that this thing is down okay it will be sent some kind of heartbeat through this uplink port so uh, you know once this is down it will come up so whatever the devices are connected uh, with these two as a redundancy before they were using this uh, as a main controller but this time it is down now they will go through this uh, wireless LAN controller so the redundancy is required and is a very good feature uh, we use in the organization so RP port is basically is concerned with that with that option then we have some distribution ports then these are just like SFP ports we have learned in our earlier um, modules or Ethernet ports or fiber ports which are these SFP distribution system ports it is saying that in uh, switch port in a trunk mode you know basically um, this uh, device will be connected with some switches let's say some switch okay then these switches will have some kind of VLAN information like uh, VLAN 1 10 20 okay so we can configure this as a trunk port as well and you are familiar at this point what trunk is also another thing 4500 series control has four distribution ports but 5500 series controllers have eight distribution ports as you can count it one two three four five six seven eight and the name if uh, <laughs> 5506 something like means this is from the 5500 series which is having total eight ports another thing is uh, this console port as well and you know what console port is so I don't need to explain here 